Welcome to the vlog. It's another, uh, it's another nighttime one. I am at Stoop Steeple Aston tonight. It's the place that I came to in vlog two, I think. Vlog two? Yeah, vlog two. Um, and if you remember, I came here to take a picture of the folly, which is behind me, and it was a clear night. And as soon as I got here, it came over all cloudy and basically ruined the night. Tonight is clear, beautifully clear. Small percentage of clouds, chance of clouds, but that's not too bad. So I've just been taking some pictures of Orion over to what is my left as I'm stood here. And I was just getting an, uh, an, an image, as I'll show you now, of the, just the, the sort of the trees really. So trees with Orion above it on about a 15 second exposure. Had a look at ISO with ISO 1600 and 3200. So I'm also exploring the folly, which is over behind me. I'm a bit of a, a distance away. So I'm about 400 meters away from it at the moment. Now what I think I can do is I can go behind it and then I should be able to come, like, take a picture coming through it and hopefully I'll be able to see the likes of Orion, etc. from the other side, because at the moment it's pointing, I've, I'm sort of looking at it and it's kind of, <laughs> kind of northeast. So there's not actually that much happening in the, in the sky behind it. Although Leo's there and I'm a Leo, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I've had it in my mind to figure out and, and observe Leo and, and see how, uh, and, and get to a point where I could spot it easily. You know when you like look up and you're like, oh, that's Orion and that's Pilates, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I'm gonna spend some time looking at uh, looking at Leo in a minute. So yeah, I've been out about 20 minutes now. I've got my thermos with hot chocolate in it. It's already freezing, but I've got about five layers, top and bottom, so <laughs> I'm warm enough. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a fantastic clear night. It's what I hoped it would be the last time I came here. So yeah. Let's, uh, let's go take some photos. Okay, so I've tried taking a picture of the folly from this distance and it's, um, I'm too far away. So I'm gonna move around the corner now. The road sort of bends around the corner. Some weird red flashing light over there as well, so I wanna investigate what that is. I'm gonna get a bit closer to it front on and see if I can get an, an image of falling stars in the, in the background and then I'm gonna walk across the field, pray that there are no electric fences. <laughs> <laughs> which could be interesting. Go the other side of it and then see if I can get a picture coming back. Um, I'm not entirely confident at this point in time that I'm going to get a decent picture tonight. So I'm going to go and explore. Got a bit closer. Got the plough in behind the folly now, as you'll see here. There was a plane that took off from a nearby airbase and went straight through the, uh, the image, which I don't mind. That's kind of cool. Just add something else to it. So I think I'm happy with that shot. I'm now going to walk over behind the folly and I think I may set a time lapse up on here. I'm not sure yet. Even though there's nobody here, I was still a little bit scared to leave my camera and tripod on its own, even though I'm only going to be 250 metres in that direction. But um, yeah, I just want to get one more of the folly with the plough behind it. But I'm, I, I think that's going to be nice. I think I can crop that and make that into a, into a decent, um, decent image. A few clouds rolling around. I remembered the hot chocolate. Yes. I just got excited because I had it on the floor. Um, I was like, ah, oh, hot chocolate, brilliant. So that's um, that's warmed me a bit, which is good. Because it is, um, all the grass here is frozen, so it's it's cold. I'm putting, you know, I'm not putting a, an Alan Wallace level shift in here, but it's, um, the grass is freezing, it's bloody cold. I feel my feet starting to go a bit, even though I've got insulated wellies on and three pairs of socks. So what I've just done to talk you through the image because this should be about photography as well is I've switched to portrait view so I flipped my camera on its side and actually I changed the ISO up I was using I had an f5 ISO 1600 and a 15 second exposure and I actually changed it up to a I was going to say I changed the ISO, but I changed the exposure up to 30 seconds and got a much better image. So I'm just going to try a couple more combinations of ISO and, and shutter speeds just to make sure I get the, the, the best possible image. And, uh, and obviously I can go home. I go, go home, look at the different images with the different settings and figure out which one's used, make a note of it, and then use that next time. Because I think that with photography, it's about being able to make it repeatable. Everyone, 
not everyone, but we can all, you can fluke a shot, right? Think, oh yeah, that was good. But if you go and try and take it again, can you take the same shot again? That's the challenge, I think. So yeah, a few more shots here. Maybe the time lapse on this cannon, and then I'm gonna go to the other side of the folly and try and get some images of Orion because it's looking nice and clear. Fact, it's so clear, it's stunning. It's beautiful. I got that little bit of excitement when I came up earlier, like you know when you think. Make sure I'm in focus. Oh, when you think, oh, you know, you get that buzz. I'm on my way to a destination. It's going to be dark. There's a little bit of nervous energy. Love that. That's why I enjoy doing this photography. So, right, a few more images. I need to stop looking away in these vlogs, don't I? A few more images. I'm not even in focus now. I'm watching my little thing, and then we'll get back. I've come up behind the folly. And the only thing I'm shitting my pants about now is I'm running low on battery and the, there's definitely a really nice composition in this. So um, I'm hoping I can get the right shot before my battery dies. I don't know how many shots I've got left in it. So we will see. But there's a good photo to be had up here. I'm glad I've come up the other side of it now. Isn't Firstly, isn't this light better? Better than the whole torch under the chin malarkey. Um, 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 I've got to stop saying that. So, I went the other side of the folly, had a look at some compositions. I didn't plan anything beforehand, which makes it harder, right? I can see why the photographers that I follow who are really good at what they do, they plan out their composition beforehand. They know exactly where they're going to be, where the stars are going to be, etc, etc. I haven't. I know that there's a nice looking old building a folly and I know that I want to take some photos of it. I went the other side and I wasn't getting much that I was happy with and, and then I, I I did two things. One I lowered the tripod so I could get a perspective looking up and then the other thing I did is I got between some arches and I was taking a picture of Orion through the arches and I hope, I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that that's come out. So it's just gone nine o'clock at night. I've been out for a couple of hours now and um, toes frozen a little bit it's been interesting tonight i'd wanted to come back to this area and take some photos i'm really hoping i've got a good one i've been looking at different isos different um, shutter speeds but really it was about trying to find a decent picture you know you've got the stars in the background you've got this folly to use and it's like how close do i need to be what kind of angle do i need to be at to try and get the, enough stars in in the background what does it look like if I go between the arches, etc., etc.? So lots to think about, lots to experiment with, and I won't know until I get home whether I've got a good image or not, which is half the challenge, right? So we'll see when you next hear from me, I'll be at home. I'm done now, I'm gonna finish my hot chocolate, I'm gonna head back into the warm, and then I'm gonna look at my images and see what we've got. And you know, if I haven't got anything decent, then I've had a night out, it's been a bit of adventure. It's always an adventure when you're out, at the, you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere in the pitch black. There's odd noises everywhere. It's, it's an adventure. It's something to do. Hopefully I'll have a good picture. If not, I'll learn from the bad ones and until next time. So let's go back to the kitchen and see what I've got. Welcome to the kitchen. I'm going to take you through some of the images that I took whilst at Steve Aston. And in the video I said, when I was out and about, I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a good photo tonight and actually I don't really feel like I did and what I'll do is I'm going to just quickly work through in the order that I took the photos and show you the images and just talk a little bit about what I liked what I didn't like and what I guess I've learned from from that outing so without further ado I'm going to show you these first few photos so these were the first few that I took and I was actually kind of happy with them. I was walking up this lane towards the folly and like I said, there was this composition, this picture that was just there with the trees and Orion sort of sat nicely just, uh, just above them. So I took a few images. It looks, it looks nice because Orion's there and it's, and it's really clear and, and you sort of follow the trees up through the sky to see in the, the constellation there. So I was really happy with that. And I think that was one of my favorite images of the night. I said in the video that once I'd got those, I then started to look at the folly and that I was a bit of a distance away. I think I said about 400 meters. And 
one of the challenges I have is can I take night sky images at that kind of distance and as you can see here I've got this you know I really struggle to get focus and one of the things I find is in the night sky photography is it's it's actually not too bad to get focus on the stars but to, to get an object on the ground in focus seems to be quite difficult so I took that image when I looked at it as well as this one which picked up a bit of light off my of my torch even though I tried to turn it away it just doesn't it doesn't work so one of the things I know I need to work on when it comes to my night sky photography is how do I get images on the ground in focus and I know I kind of know the technique of how to edit them in Photoshop. What I'm struggling with is when it's pitch black, how do you get an image in focus? Because it's not like you can look at your display and say, oh, okay, that was in that was in focus. And I think maybe it's probably the answer is some manual adjustment there. So those were the two images from about 400 meters away. Like I said, I then went in front, so I got a lot closer to the folly. So I was this kind of distance away. And again, you know, it's an okay image. You get the folly, you get through some extreme editing. I've managed to bring the, the grass up a bit. It just looks, it looks edited. And that's something that I want to address. You know, it looks like I've brought the exposure upon that. Maybe not to someone who's not into photography, but I feel like you can see that straight away. And it's very hard to bring out the details on the folly here, even though, you know, the sky is looking all right you know obviously it's cloudy and stuff so that's something I've got to work through I mentioned earlier in the vlog you saw the image with the uh, with the plane there's a nearby airport so I didn't really mind that but again as I say I brought the exposure up there and it, it just looks it it looks edited right it looks fake so I don't like that and, and that's I think something that I'm going to read up on in the, the couple of books I've got I mentioned I was playing around with different settings so this was ISO 1600 18 millimeter lens f4 10 seconds and this one was 30 seconds so you just see the the brightness uh, adjustment there so I'm just sort of playing playing around there and that's something else that I'm gonna have to look at is what is the right amount of exposure for sky for stars versus the actual ground object so then I went the other side of the folly as this image here shows and it's kind of cool you know I'm just in, in this folly just sits in the middle of fields in the middle of uh, nothing really there's a village nearby but that's about sort of half a mile away so you can see what a lovely night it was you know you can see all of those those stars in the sky and my challenge here was just to try and find the right shot and I tried all manner of things going low stepping back changing angles found it a little bit a little bit difficult but we live and learn had a look at at editing a couple of the videos again increase the exposure over the folly itself but it looks grainy it does look grainy and um, the stars maybe aren't as in in focus here so like I said I'm not particularly happy with any of these shots because I don't get the right balance of exposure of the of the folly and clarity of the of the stars and then finally I went, like I said again, I went into these, these arches and I actually kind of like a couple of these shots. But what I didn't do is I was kind of like, there was a lot of undergrowth where I was sat. So I'm in now, I've got the sort of tripod right down so the camera's down low. I'm trying to get in between the weeds and try and, and get a picture that captures, captures Orion essentially because it's so dominant behind the folly here. And I cut off this corner, this bottom right hand corner, and I was thinking if I could get the archway, then what I'd be able to do is maybe look at rotating rotating it. And do you know what? I don't think it's far off being an okay picture, but because I cut off the bottom right hand corner, it just doesn't really, really work. So again, that's something for me to think about and be aware of next time I take a picture like this, is making sure everything that needs to be in shot is in in shot. I also have to be aware of um, taking images and having the, the head torch on. As you can see here there's there's a, a really nice clarity to the stars here. You can see sort of just like the corner of Taurus there of the Elder Baron 
star there and Beetlejuice there as part of a ride. So you've got nice clarity and then you've just got this red that comes from my head torch. Never mind. All in all, you know, uh, a trip that was that was an adventure. Some of the images haven't come out as I'd I'd hoped, but it's a learning it's a learning process. I think part of the fun is the adventure of, of going out, and I hope to get some good images. And if I don't, then I learn from it. And as long as I learn something from it, then I'm fairly happy. I still got a couple of images that I could share on Instagram, so it's not you know it's not the end of the of the world and you know it's an evolving process so next time I go out I'll take what I've learned and and apply it. I just really want to get nailed down the art of capturing the foreground or an object in the foreground and then being able to layer it with the stars above. I'm confident of how I can do that in say Photoshop but actually I need to be able to date, take the image correctly before I even think about editing it. So that's on my to-do list over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully you'll see some testing around that and some evolution of that um, that skill uh, over the next uh, next couple of weeks on my Instagram and, and, and these vlogs. So anyway, if you've watched all the way through to here, I thank you ever so much for your attention and I hope you've enjoyed it and, and enjoyed following the journey so far. And uh, until next time, bye-bye.